Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem. Hey, this is Alex. I'm in red. This is the Ramble. That's in white. And we go until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States. We got better reception from the moon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What's amazing about this, Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen, what's amazing about this, we're having to do this on his phone because his computer isn't working yet. And, um, but he, he said, I can do my Zoom on, on my phone. And I go, okay. So now he's doing his phone. His picture is better than it's ever been. You know how before he kind of looked like a Modigliani painting? Now he looks like Stephen Pearl. It's really clean and clear, but the sound sucks. <laughs> so, you know, you can't have it both ways. So he's going to do the yeah, he's going to do the whole interview in sign language. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, the problem with you the, if he had the phone up to his ear or closer to his face, it wouldn't be as bad, but it because he's getting the room tone. And so on. Hello, Stephen. How are you? Hi, Alex. How are you? How's everything in NYC? Well, how have you been since last we spoke, which was about two minutes ago? Has Mayor Renfrey got the smoke out there? I don't know him. Mario Pocatino can't do Did you? You just changed your shirt. No. Did, you changed your shirt, didn't you? No, no. It's a week later. No, I didn't. That's what I'm wearing all day. <laughs> I didn't change Man, mine. Are you a professional or what? They never, they <laughs> never, they <laughs> never, rem they never remember this, the, 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 uh, what do you call it? The, um, the shirt, yeah. the shirt you're wearing. In fact, they don't remember it's a, it's anything. A week after we did the one. Listen, we only got three people watching, you know, and, and they, they, they're, they don't. And, and the Beatles are only four people, and look what they did. So. Yeah, and I could keep running the same show every night, and they think it was a new one, you know, so. They don't know. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, uh, 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 so how have you been? Uh, let me let me ask you. You're living in Nevada, and I haven't looked at the current charts yes, to see where Nevada, where Nevada is in the uh, pantheon of petri dishes around the country. But it can't be good. Oh, there. Yeah, it's all over the place. Now you said you did. Well, a, we, they're doing a couple. They're doing shows at a couple of places, but the audience, you have to have like 25 people in the audience, and everyone has to wear a mask. It was almost like uh, eight miles from the stage, so you were, you were doing all that. So, but I was with them last week. Thanks. So, yeah. Now, wait a minute. Now, in, in, most, uh, most comedy clubs don't make their money off of the admission. They make their money off the drinks, mm -hmm. right? And there's usually drink, like a two-drink two minimum. How do they drink right. with masks on? Oh, well, you can take the mask off the drink or eat, and then you put the mask back on. Then take the mask off, take another sip, then you put the mask back on. Like, so, well, oh, that's got to be, like, that's got to be, you're going to a comedy show to laugh, and then you're having to do all these uh, dances with masks, you know. It's still weird, you know. Yeah. I did one of those shows with the car. They hunk when you do a punchline. And that was my lady. That was my wife. I shit. I shit. I was so yeah. uh, it was kind of anyway. weird, but uh, did a regular audience show at the Laugh Factory, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. You're, so, uh, you're, st uh, 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 you're still. You okay? You okay? You, so yeah. Those you're still breaking up, but, you know. I was look. still breaking up. Oh, Jesus. Like, now, you see, when oh, you're oh, close, oh, when oh, you oh. get closer to the to the mic and talk. How's it? Huh? I'm happy to go close. How's it? No. I'm going to get back closer, Mr. <laughs> It's, it's not breaking. Is it better this way? It's not breaking up as much, but you know, somehow. That's the way guys fucked up. Listen, I got news for you. This may sound horrible, but you've got to move again to a place where you get better reception. I have to be unusable <laughs> in the unusable title. 
I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't yeah. know what to do. Well, do you do you have a do you, do you use a? Are you using Wi-Fi? Is what you're using, right? I don't know. I think I'm on UHF right now. I don't know what I'm using. <laughs> on the phone, you're using Wi-Fi. But you, but you, you bought service, right? You, you, bought, you bought internet service for your. I got service. Yeah, yeah. like ETC, T, I don't know what it is. Yeah, is it an expensive? I don't know what it is. is it it's an, just I got a phone. Is it an expensive? <laughs> is it an expensive? <laughs> is it an expensive plan? Eh, forty-seven bucks a month. So you should be getting a. You should be getting about two hundred gigabytes, uh, uh, two hundred megabytes a second. Uh, that, that's. Uh, I could be getting 3D and smell all this I'm getting for these prices. It's probably your Wi Fi. You have a Wi Fi, right? You have to have a Wi Fi, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to do. Oh, wait a minute. You could be doing this just oh, yeah. by your phone. Yeah, you could just be doing this by your phone signal. This is probably doing, working on your phone itself. It's not using the Wi Fi. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it's using. I'm an idiot electronically. I, I mean, do you have it? I just. Oh. I don't Wait a, minute, wait, a minute, wait, a wait, wait a minute. I know idiots. Okay, Larry Brown. I talk to him every two weeks, and it's on a landline. <laughs> okay, it's on a landline. Uh -huh. uh, but you know, <laughs> I think maybe what your problem is, is you're probably using the phone system, and if you used your Wi-Fi and uh -huh. connected your phone to your Wi-Fi, uh, it's too much for me to tell you how to do. So forget it. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, anyway. I'm long past the days of being tech support, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I could solve people's problems I'll usually. Call some Bombay. Hello, my name is. <laughs> and I, I can't even solve my own problems, so you know. But uh, so, so anyway, so, so you work. You, 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 you work a comedy club. Everybody's wearing masks. That must really make them want to laugh, right? <laughs> so it's either that or nothing. So, so, uh, so, so what kind of jokes do you do now when you go out to these infected club sites? Yeah. Well, I figure I do a lot of lady driver jokes. They haven't been done in a while. And it takes the so, uh, <laughs> I do what I did. I do whatever the hell it is I do, whatever that is, and it just seems to work most of the time. Yeah. So laugh. you can hear them laughing and everything, but uh, they got masks on. Yeah, well, I got you, you, you. Women drivers jokes. God, we don't do those anymore, do we? Um, no, no. Here, like this one. I love this one. My wife's such a bad driver. Come on. How bad is she? So bad that they took her license. Hey so bad they took her license away. That's a good joke. I want to use that. <laughs> hey, my wife says you're turn 30. Yes, we'll Hey, here's Betty for this. Well, I, you know, I, I used to like to do my impression of what I call the, the, the bummer comic, you know. My wife's so fat. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. How fat is she? Well, she's so fat, but the doctor said if she doesn't lose weight one. soon, she's going to have a heart attack and die. <laughs> Hey, I just flew from <laughs> Vegas, and it was a really comfortable flight. My luggage got there pretty early too, so it was pretty nice. <laughs> my, luggage. my wife is so fat that when she sits around the house, it takes her a while to stand up from the couch because she's got so much weight on her. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole new form of comedy. <laughs> you know what it is? It's non-comedy. Yeah, it's non-comedy. You know, there's some people making a lot of money doing that shit today. So. Oh, I remember once we used to have Monty Hoffman, who was fat. And one day, oh, the, oh. the the joke, the thing on my show was we were having a contest to, you know, Monty Hoffman is so fat. And then we make fat jokes about Monty Hoffman. Uh, and he was there, and it was one fat joke after another. And there are a lot of fat yeah, jokes. Yeah. You know. My wife there is so are, fat that when she stands on the street in a red, root, red, white, and blue dress, they try to shove mail in her mouth. Thank you, folks. <laughs> I'll be here all week. You know? Man, he, he's so fat, he's standing on a scale and one at a time. <laughs> hey, I tell you. Yeah. I always, I always wondered about the jokes like that. I mean, if you think about them in retrospect, I don't think they play very well today. Because we're so no, sensitive no. about what we say and how we say it and the kind of... I mean, they're jokes you probably can't mm -hmm. do anymore, right? Otherwise, you get booed. 
I'm thinking of stuff I did in 1985, and I probably couldn't do like today. So they get boo, boo, boo in my safe space. I don't like that. Can you think of one? You offended people with vowels in their names. Can you think of one? People, people, what? Can you think of one? Oh, I did one. <laughs> what about the San Francisco gay men's chorus and uh, what they did with the tuning fork? I can't do that anymore. <laughs> and uh, I want them. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's so sensitive. For I get to use it. You know, there was a time in this country where you would go to a vaudeville theater. Not that I lived in the time of vaudeville, but you could go to a vaudeville yeah. theater, <laughs> and there were there, there, there were what they called dialect acts, guys who you know were doing Jewish accents and then Jewish jokes, yeah. and, you know, and nobody minded. It was it was a form of humor. And now if you did those jokes, oh, yeah. man, you'd have, like, the, you know, the Anti-Defamation League after you. Yeah, right. You know, so, I mean, I... Uh, it, it, it's that, so big that he walks into a room that knows his two minutes anti-Semite, anti-Semite. Well, I mean, if you think about it, Jack Benny was the biggest uh, anti-Semitic joke of all time. Because of the thing about how yeah. che how cheap he was, uh oh, you know, well, you just turned your camera, so now you're sideways. Uh oh, my battery's dying. It, is your battery dying? <laughs> this this is like talking. This is like talking. Jesus Christ! This is like talking to Steve <laughs> Curl on the moon. You're, now your camera isn't on. I know. Hold on, we're plugging the battery in. We may have to make this a short, a short deal. We still got about, we got only got about three minutes left here. If you can get your camera working, but it it does say Stephen Pearl, however, so we know that you, you can't. Are you there, Stephen? Well, I think we've lost Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. Um. We could have sent him to the moon and gotten a better picture and sound than we did from Las Vegas, Nevada. But uh, what, what's his problem here? Hold on a second. Let me let me try to um, uh, ask to start video. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. There, there, oh, I, well, we lost him. That's it. Okay. Well, that's our time with Stephen Pearl this week. But, you know, next time we'll put him on the moon. And uh, things will be a hell of a lot better. So thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that, that's the way it turned out. Oh, wait a minute. Let me turn on my lights here. Um, that's the way it turned out with Stephen Pearl about a week ago. And I haven't talked to him since. We don't know whether he got his phone working or not. But apparently he lost, uh, he lost some kind of contact with us. And, uh, uh, but we thought we'd play it anyway, just for the hell of it, mainly because I needed something to fill time. And uh, it's the best way to fill. It's the, the time filler on this program. So anyway, uh, so I get a call the other day from my uh, urologist. Now, you know, of all the doctors that I have uh, or have had over the years, the ones I've hated the most have been urologists. Now, on the other hand, this one urologist I finally got, the guy who saved my life by telling me I had prostate cancer, um, who I really like calls me, his office calls, he wants to see me. Okay, and I'm going, oh, what's this all about? And uh, uh, so I make an appointment to go see him uh, today. And then I listen to the message again, she says, well, we can do a, a, a phone thing, you know, phone, whatever they call it, tele, tele visiting or whatever. Uh, and um, I said, oh, let's try that, okay, because I'd rather not go out. I'd rather not go to a doctor's office. And she understood completely, and she said, okay, he'll call you, okay. So today, uh, he, uh, uh, he's supposed to call me at 445. He didn't call me till 5 after 5, but I understand. He's probably busy, and he's, I'm in a, a queue. And he, I called him, and he said, he's going to get to you. Don't worry, okay, so just stand by. So then he calls me. And I'm kind of, I don't know, what does he want to see me for? I know he hasn't seen me for a year, okay? So maybe he just wants to see me, okay? He misses me. Uh, and, and I can understand that. And I don't mind seeing him. I don't mind doing a televisit or, 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 like this because he will charge me for it. 
and I want to see him make money. I like the guy. He saved my life. Uh, he sent me to a great doctor who did all great work uh, for me and so on. So finally he calls me today, and uh, I said, okay, so uh, what did you want out of me? And he said, well, I hate to admit this, but the state of New York requires that if I did a biopsy and found cancer, that I have to fill out a whole form on that person so they can put it into their cancer database. And I'm thinking to myself, gee, I've, I, of all the things that I've been able to accomplish in my life, the greatest one is being in the New York State Cancer Database. So I said, what information do you need? And he asked me a few questions, and that was it. And then we talked for a while. And I told him, he said, how are you doing? And I said, I'm okay. And he said, well, what went on? And I told him about the various things that I went through. He said, yeah, I've been getting reports, you know, that, that uh, you had the... Uh, of the seeds, and you had the radiation, how that go for you, and so on. And he said, I saw the PSA reports. And these the PSA is a, a prostate-specific antigen. And if it's high, you probably got prostate cancer. And if it's low, don't worry, okay? Well, in my case, it had gone up, then it came down. But then he decided, well, maybe I better do a, uh, 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 a biopsy on you. And he doesn't do biopsies unless he really feels they're needed. And he did it, and he found that I had some prostate cancer. So it was off to this radiation and so on and so forth. And he said, uh, I saw your PSA level. He said, it is so negligible, it regis doesn't even register. And I said, yeah. I said, it was a, what, a 0 0.2. And then I said, I went to my doctor about two months ago, and I got it done. And it was uh, 0, 0.0. He said, yeah, you don't have any real sign of a PSA right now. And he said, that's good. He said, some people, after they've had what you had, you know, have some measurable, they, they wonder why it hasn't gone down precipitously. And the reason is, is that uh, some people doesn't go down that uh, a, a lot in the beginning. And you wait for it to go down all the way after about a year and a half. But if you're at this point now, he said, chances are it's going to remain that way. And I said, well, then can we say kind of that I'm cancer-free? And doctors don't like to say cancer-free because that, 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 to begin with, they could probably get sued if they're wrong. And I just, as he said, uh, I, I said, uh, uh, is it pretty much you think the cancer is pretty much gone? And he went, yep. And I said, that's what I love to hear from a doctor is a technical term like, yep, because that is so definite, you know, and it made me feel good, made me feel much better about just the whole procedure and what I'd gone through. And he said, yeah, you had to go through a lot, but look at where you are now. And I said, it wasn't that terrible, you know, no part of it. He, he told me a year ago about the prostate cancer, and I want to say this to any guy out there who comes down with it, say, at later age like mine, which was 80, that I said to him at the time, is this going to kill me? And his reply to me at that time was, no, it's just going to be mildly annoying. And that's the best way I can describe the whole process. It was mildly annoying. And this guy, I, I had to thank him. I just thanked him. I said, thank you. You saved my life, you know. And you sent me to the right guys to get the job done. And now I feel like I'm okay, you know. I'm, I'm doing all right. I said, but I got a couple of questions. I said, I have been dog tired lately. I've been just, you know, fatigued. I said, I'm a little better today in the last couple of days than I have been, but I feel fatigued. Is that, is, could that be from the radiation? And I got another, yep. <laughs> he said, yeah. He says the radiation can cause uh, uh, fatigue for, oh, at least a year sometimes. And he said, don't, don't even worry about it. That's, that's an expected side effect of all that you went through. So I got off the call feeling pretty damn good, at least that I'm not dying of some horrible disease, you know. And uh, uh, I, I feel, uh, I feel uh, a, little, a little better now. I'm still fatigued and I'm still tired, you know, but what the hell. So anyway, uh, other than that, um, I'm having a few problems. If you watch my show on Facebook, um, you might have, uh, uh, right after the show, some trouble getting it because I'm having trouble posting it. Um, Facebook is really a horrible, horrible platform. Uh, 
as hard as they try to get into various things like video and messaging and things like that, they're not as good as the other people, you know. They're not as good, for instance, as YouTube when it comes to video. And uh, every night when I try to post it, it says error. Now, I never got that before, and when I created the files to upload, they were no different than the ones I was uploading weeks ago where they just went right through. So I had to write them and tell them that because they didn't send me an email saying, oh, here's the reason why it didn't happen. You probably didn't do this and you didn't do that. I did everything. I no, Nothing different than I've been doing before. So I have to kind of post it in a different way, and uh, it's not the preferred way I want to do it because I can't see how many people have watched it. But uh, I, 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 if you're looking for it after the show is over and it's not there, just know that I'm trying okay to get it up uh <laughs> the the other thing is over youtube i don't know the numbers of people watching have just plummeted now i i don't know that that's a, an action of uh, of of this show suddenly starting to suck or whether it's I, it can't be the christmas season because who the fuck is shopping all right but they're doing it all online uh, I just don't know why the numbers have gone mm, down unless I'm not getting a proper report back from YouTube. But that gets me very frustrated because I do this show and, I, you know, I'm, I'm an old radio guy. I like to have an audience, right? When I don't feel I've got any kind of measurable audience out there, it really starts to bother me. So tell your friends to watch, okay? I'd really appreciate it. I really would. Uh, so anyway. Uh, I because I don't know if this keeps up, I'm I'll just stop doing the show. I mean, I just you know, uh, I, I'll do the Monday thing and be happy with that. And maybe do a Friday thing in the afternoon and be happy with that and call it uh, call it a day. You know, uh, but uh, this nighttime thing I'd like to keep doing as long as people are watching it. But I don't want to go to all the trouble of all the work that I do with it to have like you know a couple hundred people watch it. I want the, the five or 600 that used to. So I don't know what's happening. It's been just in the last week or so that this has happened. That's the funny part about it, you know? It's, it's not like uh, it happened yesterday. I mean, like it happened uh, you know, gradually over the last couple of months. It, it just, went this week, boom, down. And a lot of that, some of that can ha happen uh, because of... Uh, uh, YouTube could be doing something where they're not measuring it correctly or doing any one of a number of things. And it really, it really bothers me. Also, the amount of people that have been calling the last couple of nights has also been down. Now, I don't know what the reasoning is, uh, but uh, I sure wish that if you're out there tonight, uh, you would call the program, you know, and be part of it. We got uh, about three people waiting to come on right now, and they're some of the regulars, and uh, so I will go to them, and let's uh, let's see what happens here. Let me see if we start getting them. Uh, there is uh, uh, Brian Neary, and there's Jeff Stein, and uh, Charlie Wallace uh, should be joining us shortly. Um, Hold on, I, I want to hear you complain some more. Hold on, I just want to finish the complaint. <laughs> oh, you like that, huh? We get cut off, and I can't hear all the rest of your rants. So. Oh, really? Well, what yeah. kind of a rant is it? You know, just one of my usual depressive rants that I go through. But uh, uh, you have an orange face tonight. Are you using some kind of lighting to make yourself orange? And it looks good. It does not that it looks bad. You know, it looks a little fine. better. Yeah. Yeah, it looks fine. Why does go back? Oh, here's, yeah. Here's Josh Wheeler. It must be Friday, folks. It's Josh Wheeler. It's Friday. It's Friday. Oh, Marjorie doesn't listen anymore, right? Okay. No. No, she doesn't. No, she liked that song. I haven't even got her listening anymore. <laughs> See? Now you need to go to her and say, why aren't you listening? I'm trying to get a poll, though. <laughs> Hello, uh, Josh. How are you tonight? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. fine thank you. Uh, I, um, the you know, the FDA tonight approved the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, um, which Pfizer. 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 The Pfizer drug. Uh, 
Um, but they did it because of Trump, of course, because Trump said <laughs> that if they did you read about this, see, well, we're trying to get everybody so that they don't feel we're rushing this, but that this drug is coming mm. out and it's been vetted and it's been studied and it's safe. Come on, let's all get the, you know, get the, get the, uh, get the vaccine. And then Trump says to the FDA, if you don't approve it by tomorrow, I'm going to fire the head of the FDA. Uh, oh, my God. Not rushing anything. That, that really gives you confidence, doesn't it, that this one wasn't rushed? <laughs> if I were, I think his name is Han or something. I can't remember his name now. But he's the head of the FDA. If I were him, I would have just said, okay, we approve it and I quit. <laughs> you know? I mean, he wanted. He said, "If it's not approved by tomorrow, you, you, the head of the FDA is going to have to resign." Yeah. Well, then who's going to approve it, you asshole? You know. I mean, it's just. Was he, hmm? Oh, and then today, of course, a bad day for him again. His Supreme Court, right? The one in which he has three people who he put on that Supreme Court voted oh. not to hear his case. Yeah. Now, th two of them, it was two to five. Okay. I want to know who the two were. Anybody read who the two were? Mm -mm. No, I, I, no, no. I, I was wondering too. Yeah. But who were the two that recused themselves? They didn't recuse themselves. They voted. That's only seven. Two to five is only seven. Well, yeah, it was seven to two. It was seven to two. Oh, okay. Two. Oh, was it seven to two? Okay. Now, yeah. uh, uh, do you know, Josh, who the two were? If I had to guess, I would. If I had to guess, no, I didn't read it. But if I had to guess, I would say probably uh, Alito and Thomas. Do you think I, so? Do you don't. You don't think it was any of the uh, the three that he just put in there? No. As far as I know, all three of them were in the majority. Oh, really? Oh, so he can't even I'm hire somebody sure, yeah. and have them go along with him. See, we were all worried right. that because he got these people on the Supreme Court. They would vote for him in something yeah. like this, and I guess they didn't. But anyway, he's... Uh, I mean, I hmm? I didn't read the for sure. I only guessed that because I haven't even read about the case yet since it just happened a little bit ago, and I was working on yeah. something. But I saw a tweet from Michael Beschloss, who is a historian that I follow. Yeah. And the tweet said, No, Mr. President, sorry to inform you, but you can't fire Jim. Justices for such Kavanaugh and Barrett, and I just assumed that since it was a tweet accompanying another tweet that he put out about the case, and mm -hmm. him saying that he couldn't fire them meant that it was because they were in the majority. Why so, did did Trump put out a a, a tweet saying he was going to fire them? No, no, oh, okay. Best just take shots at him all the time. That's yeah. Like, oh. I've told you about that before. He doesn't really call him out by name. He just gets his quiet little shots in there. But, I, I mean, we can look it up and find out. But if I guess those three joined with, you know, in Sotomayor, Breyer, mm -hmm. probably Justice Roberts, and then your two that didn't, probably Justice Alito mm -hmm. and Justice Thomas. Now, did, was it that they did? Did, so, did you? Yeah. Does that mean they voted? Uh, they voted for Trump, or that they just abstained from it? Well, it just means that they. I'm assuming that they just they voted for the writ of certiorari or whatever, where they had to hear the case. Yeah. You know, they voted in favor of hearing it. Doesn't even mean they would have right. their favor. Mm -hmm. They just voted that they would hear the. They thought it worthy of being heard, and it, I think it takes five justices to have a case heard or something. I can't remember. Maybe it's four, but I think that's you know right. that's a different rule set than a than a ruling. Wait a minute, but you yeah, know, yeah. John Larkin has they, his they, hand they, up. The yeah. seven basically. I I read that it was Alito and uh, Thomas who said who wanted to hear it. At least hear it, but they but they said they would they yeah. would have uh, denied it. You know, I mean, there's no way they were going to go for it. Yeah, they just wanted they to be thought, fair fair about it or something like that. They, they thought that they have to that they should hear any kind of thing that's between a state or something like that. Yeah, they, they thought they thought it should be heard, but nobody else did. All the other ones said, "Fuck it, it's bullshit." 
Now, yeah, if, look if, at the can of worms that would open. Generally, up. when well, but but generally, in any case, it's not heard, especially by that margin. It just it it's a pretty mm -hmm. good indication that all the justices took a look at it. Mm -hmm. The the briefs and it's not the big briefs like when they argue the case, but you know they get all this material mm -hmm. and they go through and they all basically come to the conclusion where they say this is not even worth us hearing. So that tells you that they don't there's any real good legal basis for it to appear before them. They don't see why they should step in. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a lawsuit that gets dismissed as you show up. And and the and and you're suing someone, and the defense makes a motion to dismiss the case immediately, like they always do, right? right. You know, anytime you sue someone, you're the first thing your lawyers, oh yeah, if you're being sued, yeah. is say this should be dismissed because of this, that, and the other, and the judge says, "Yep, I agree, bye," and it's right. I mean, and that's pretty rare in those kinds of cases, but in the Supreme Court case, a lot of people have their case heard by the Supreme Court every year. I can't remember the number, but it's very, very high. It's in the hundreds. And very few get heard most of the time because they just don't think it's 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 either not legally worthy. They don't think it's their place to step in. This is the kind of case where that probably wasn't it. I mean, this is a a, a big case that you know it's in their league, but I think they just looked and said. Well, I, this is, I think they based they it on. I think they based. I think <laughs> they based it from what I understand on some kind of case law that goes way back called the nutcase. Uh, theory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> yes, Charlie. Yeah. Charlie. Yeah, basically, what they said was, is none of Texas's business how other states oh, decide God. to carry out their vote. Yeah, well, yeah. That's, and this was Texas true, who brought I mean, this I, I, suit. I, 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 don't, I just don't, you know, it's, it's very difficult for me to the hypocrisy and to just dismiss it in a bunch of people that for many, many years have decried the issue of states' rights, yeah. all yeah. the rights that states should have and all the powers that they should have. And, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, it's totally out the window and they should, and the, and the federal government should run elections. Yeah. I mean, they're not being true to their, they're doing what hypocrites do, which is, you know, Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, except for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's an interesting yeah, thing. I mean, and, and isn't that what, you know. Charlie, I mean, Charlie lives in Texas. So tell me if I'm wrong, Charlie. Uh, maybe you don't know this. But your attorney general is being investigated or something, or he is. He's being he, sued. He's, he's actually got charges against him. He's got charges yeah. against him. That yeah. the president could, ways. the president could uh, give him a. What do you call it? When pardon, a, a pardon yeah, federal charges, yeah. uh, uh, against are, the federal, are they federal charges. charges or state? I, federal, federal charges. And, right. and, and uh, the reason he was doing this was because he wanted to get on Trump's good side. Yep. Yeah. You yep. know, but what, what gives with all these other attorney generals who were nutcases? And what about those, what, 60 or 70 senators, maybe more than that? Uh, 126. Or, or, I mean, excuse uh, me, uh, Congress uh, people. GLP House of representatives, yeah. Yeah. Who, GLP. Yeah. God damn. Who, who, who would be talking about good. Cruz or anybody, would you? It, it <laughs> yeah, cool. right. Cruz was going to be the lawyer in this case. Yeah. Okay. This was basically now, a, a coup. Listen, you, know, you can yeah. say your father killed Kennedy. Yeah. Somebody can say your Speaking father killed Chris. Kennedy. You can call your mother a whore, practically, is what uh, Trump did. And he still will kiss your ass at some point. That's Speaking Ted Cruz Chris. for you. What? Yes, John. You know, there's, there was a little bit of truth to that uh, story about his father involved in the uh, JFK thing mm -hmm. because the, there was a, a, a dude who was, his name was Jose Cruz, mm -hmm. who was a Cuban exile that was mixed up with uh, um, Lee Harvey Oswald in New Orleans, mm -hmm. you know, before the assassination. And whether, whether or not that was really Cruz's father I don't know about that. I don't think but it was Cruz. I think it, it was doesn't. Jose Cuervo. Jose Cuervo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's like John Smith, though. I mean, John yeah, that's Smith. True. That, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But the guy say. was a Cuban CIA connected dude that was 
screwing that we, they actually had a picture of him uh, with Harvey Oswald when Harvey Oswald was handing out those fair play for Cuba. Yeah, well, he was he athletes. was in New Orleans yeah. doing that stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I saw that in the uh, the Oliver Stone movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hated that movie. I just hated that movie. What? Yeah. I'm over with that I, movie. I, was, yeah. I saw that in the theaters. It, well, like, well, you know, oh, the trouble is, but, the trouble is, the whole thing is complete. Just, it, the whole thing is complete fiction. And when you yeah. then do a movie about something like that, and it's complete fiction, it somehow winds up being the truth. You know, yeah. it, it's the truth that survives, you know. It's the old line about if it's the difference between telling the truth or printing the legend, print the legend. Yes, uh, John Larkin. Did you hear that they uh, they cracked the Zodiac uh, crypt, uh, you know, the uh, the code thing that he sent? Mm -hmm. they, the, the FBI cracked it today. Or no, it was actually two private people. They cracked the uh, code. It was a code that he wrote, and they... they, yeah. they, they, they yeah. uh, uh, they decoded it, and it, 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 it oddly enough, it was it said Rosebud. Uh, <laughs> but that, that dude must have been some kind of a government connected dude or something. Really? I mean, to be that genius to to create a a code that couldn't be solved for fifty years. Well, what did the code say? Yeah, what did the code say? Well, they did. They don't want to say because it, you know, there's. Oh, it's still they need well, that's oh, that, no. that's like that's that's like a woman starting to jerk you off and then stopping just before you come. Come on. Well, check it out. It's in the New York Times. They say a little. No, bit. they they said they said what it said. It was a bunch of stuff like you can't catch me, and he said that that wasn't. They they did de, they did de tell you what it said in part a, a little bit, of it. a little bit. But, but but they they've never figured out who the Zodiac killer was. No, right? not yet. No, no, no. There's still parts of it that have to be decoded. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's not like, hey, I'm Bob Smith or anything like that. It didn't didn't come out that uh, way. No, uh, who, 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 did he call Herb Cain or he sent a letter to Herb Cain? Yeah, I think so. Like Herb Cain was a columnist in San Francisco at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But going back to the going back to the naysayers, how long is this shit gonna go on? I mean, you know, how long is this shit gonna go on? What shit? The guy said. The guy said tonight until his hands on the Bible. Yeah. Uh, on the 20th, that's what the guy... You know, I was driving home again Tuesday. tonight. I was driving home again tonight on 101, and these fuckers are up there on the overpass, fucking up traffic. <laughs> Stop the steal. Stop the steal. The motherfuckers are all the way across the freeway. Hmm. This shit's got to stop. Well, Electoral College votes on Monday. Yeah, but they're still not going to stop. Well, you know, who was it? Uh, I think Brush Limbaugh said this, is, this may lead to secession. Well, there's so much shit going Some on. states are I saying they're thinking stuff. about seceding from the union over this. And my uh, feeling right. about that is, please leave us. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just leave us and shut the fuck up. Okay. Yeah, where are all these lot. people? Where are all these people, you know, defending democracy? You know, where are these people that are supposed to be Americans? Why don't they give it yeah. up? Why don't they go back to where they came from? Go back into the bushes, <laughs> hide where yeah. they were. I mean, Jesus Christ! Because they keep let's, getting let's get on with their fucking country and, and quit this bullshit. Yeah, they keep getting I'm fed. Tired they're of still it. in it. Like, mm -hmm. like he has the power to overturn stuff. Well, we we feel something happened, so overturn it. It's not how it works. Yeah. I mean, this shit's going on. It's going on and on and on, and these people just keep going over and over again. Uh, you know, if uh, any intelligent person, you know, last night I mentioned that. Marjorie had mentioned to me that she has a very close friend, friends since they were in college together. And her friend happens to be a Republican, staunch Republican, and voted for Trump. And I said, you know, I can understand being a staunch Republican. I can understand why people are Republicans. It's a certain point of view, and you prescribe to that point of view. But how you can be a Republican and then support Trump after what he's done. I mean, what's the number one job of a president of the United States? To protect the American America. public. Yeah. And he did nothing to protect us. He doesn't even care. He doesn't talk about COVID. You know? And, and so how can you be a Republican? I can understand how you can be a Republican. I can't understand how you can be a Republican and vote for him. You know, there are other people to vote for. You can vote for the libertarian or something like that, which is kind of, you know, it's a Republican who likes to smoke pot. 
Uh, you know, I mean, it's do that. Cult. You know, but don't vote for Trump. It's a total cult. Yeah. Is it a cult? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yep. Well, what do you think he could do to get all his voters not to vote for him? I mean, every single thing he's done, he keeps proving everybody that they will go to me till I die. I mean, so I, they, you know, well, my, the thing die. is, he's my, pulling, again, he's pulling the, the yeah. Christian movement in with him. And, and you know, I've, I, I had somebody send me some shit the other day and he asked for my opinion on it. And, and he was kind of open about it. And I listened to this shit for an hour and a half. And these people, and I go, dude, don't don't even, it's conspiracy shit. And they started talking about, you know, they were mixing in the God stuff and the end of the world and the reset, the worldwide reset and the whole shit. And I go, and, you know, and I listened to the whole thing and I tried to, you know, keep my mind open. And I'm listening to these people talking about this shit. And I'm going, you know, he's talking about how COVID is, is uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a setup for everybody to be, you know, the, the, to be reset and that the, the world was going to end and get your provisions ready and the whole fucking thing. And I'm going, and Trump was supposed to be our savior and it's going to happen. And you know, this, you not, it, it right? was like, what the hell? And, and somebody was listening to this shit and there's, a, and I looked at, it was on YouTube and I looked at this listeners and there was 82,000 people that listened to this shit and only a hundred of them said thumbs down. I'm going, wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean to tell me? Do you mean to tell me I can get eighty-two thousand viewers to this show if I start spouting that crap? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, we uh, just oh, say okay. God every few hours. You know. Every well, 10, let, 15 let, why don't we? Why don't we spend the rest of this show trying to create conspiracies? <laughs> you you probably get it. You mm -hmm. know, just talk about how good Trump is and how you know the the election isn't over with, and how uh, you know God's going to come in and save us all. You're gonna you're gonna get viewers. Well, you know, it, it's I, insane it, right now. To begin with, there's so it, many people out there that are just sucking this stuff up. If, if you think God's going to save you from COVID, just remember. There, who, there just, was stuff in there that, you know, they, they started mixing in the 5G shit. And I'm going, what, oh, the, yeah. what the hell the 5G <laughs> got to do with? I'm not taking the vaccine. No, they, they're putting that. It's going to reverse your body. It's going to change all the antibodies in you. <laughs> And you're going to become a fucking robot or some shit. You well, know? you know what they say. You know what they what say. What is wrong with you? What they say is that the vaccine has a microchip, microchip. in it. Yeah. Oh, so they can follow they you. Or, they, they can follow. Wait a minute. So, so they can follow you around. Well, I got news for you. You got a microchip on you right now. Yeah. All right. Well, It'll tell them exactly where phone. you are. They what? Comparing it to your phone. But mm. they're also being scientific about it now, saying that it's going in and changing your your antibodies to work against you mm. so that they can control you through your antibodies inside, you know, scientifically. Isn't science, uh, to, is it, isn't scientific there. fact wonderful? It's, it's insane. And these people are sucking it up. They're sucking it up. Have we become a nation of morons? It, it yeah, sure as hell looks like it. And I don't like being part of it. Yeah. 70 million at least. Yeah. You know? Now because listen, I, uh, yeah. There's so many of them. It could be the guy you're talking to next to you. Yeah. And then you get yeah. sucked up into it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, let me let me stop for a moment because I want to talk to Tony for a second. How's your brother doing? No, oh, he's doing. Hold on, she's in the bathroom. I'm going to go inside. She gets upset. In the bathroom. Yeah, man. You know what it is? What? Alex is in a crazy week. I don't want. Actually, he went to Sloan today, right? Sloan First, it wasn't cancer, Ox, but they had to do the biopsy. It wasn't cancer. So the, the, the lady told us, it's last Friday. She didn't think it was cancer, but you got to wait for the biopsy. All right. So we waited, right? Mm -hmm. And then she called Wednesday, and she told him it's cancer. He, so he, had, a, he had a, let's just say he had a thing on his tongue, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of small, not too big, but okay. it's right on the side. Right. Okay. So... Mm -hmm. So we got all upset because you think cancer, like, oh, shit, you know, is it, where did it originate from, stuff like that. So we, we, it's he went from in 5G. Today. It's from 5G. Yeah. yeah. So he, he went in today for the uh, consultation to set everything up. And she said, you know, it is cancer, but it's non, non aggressive. It's not even a stage yet. So it just, so he's all they're going to do now Wednesday. He's got to go for his COVID test Monday. He did all his pre tests today. Mm -hmm. He goes in Wednesday, Alex. They put him out, they take it out. It's like a parcel colostomy. It's, it's a little piece they get to take off, so it shouldn't affect his speech at all. Right. And yeah. then 
I don't want to talk in front of her. Alex, she was a basket case. She kept me up the last three nights. She prayed to every saint. If they they must have heard because I felt bad for it. She she's yelling at me. I you said it wasn't cancer. I says, Ma, I wasn't sure. Like I'm doing the biopsy. They're not gonna know. You know, what am I going to do? I said, so he told me not to tell her, but then he, you know, because she gets old, but she knew I was upset, so she, know, she knows what I'm lying. I can't lie to my mother. That's the, can you lie to your mother, Alex, so she would know? Well, I can lie to my mother, but she's dead. That's why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but when she was alive, I mean, would she know if you were fibbing? Like, I don't know if I ever lied to my mother. I, never, I wanted to keep it away from her. I never her, had a reason to, because she was so involved with herself that she didn't really care what my life was about. <laughs> You know, to make a lawyer. So the, basically, she said, they go in Wednesday. They take it out. He don't need any chemo. He won't need any radiation. Right. And that's it. It's like and it's said, like it's like if you get a a, a kind of a, a a mole or something, and they biopsy it, and it was cancerous. So they just make sure they get all of it, and that's it. You know, these are we were nervous reckless. He don't even smoke or drink, and his girlfriend's like, maybe it's the mouthwash because there's alcohol in no, it. No, maybe it's just cancer. You know, yeah, how, here's, here's something I read, and this is because these are all guys here, I can say this. I read this uh, in my wanderings around about prostate cancer. Uh, do you know one way to pre prevent prostate cancer? According to what I've read, they found that people that masturbate 12 times a week have less of a chance of getting <laughs> prostate cancer than if they only do it four or five days a week. All right. Damn. Now, now, wait a minute. Uh, Nothing at the pace. That being the case, how the hell did I get it? Uh, but does that, does that mean how many loads or is that how many hours? Because huh? there's a difference. Well, we're not talking about laundry to begin with. <laughs> Uh, but um, uh, no, but I, I um, of course, I, you know, I was 80. It was 80 before I got it. But supposedly that does prevent you from from getting it. Right. You know, uh, uh, so. so that means you were doing 12 and you were doing fine. And then now when you start slowing down, <laughs> then they slow down. <laughs> yeah. it's like speed. Like the movie Speed, you got to keep that going. Got to keep it. Well, what, was it, what was it that Gilbert Gottfried was saying? There was some somebody who got busted for jerking off, and he got like 30 days in jail, and he said, geez, you know, uh, uh, if that happened to me, uh, I'd get the death penalty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I mean, but... Yep. Yeah, the only time I went to your studio, uh, Gilbert Gottfried was there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, the thing is that I, you know, I mean, I had prostate cancer, and every, I, I use that as a sympathy thing. So everybody goes, oh, oh really? You had, you had sympathy. You had sympathy <laughs> cancer. You had <laughs> prostate cancer. And I go, yeah, but, you know, what? You know? Uh, I'm, I'm going to wind up dying of something else. I'm, I'm suggesting it's Marjorie. Uh, <laughs> you know, so... Because uh, marriage will kill you. Marriage will kill you, right, Kevin? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kevin's yeah, right. Plan murder? Hmm. You're gonna be murdered? <laughs> probably, probably. Um, but uh, aggravated to death. Hmm. Because <laughs> you'll be aggravated, aggravated to death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But anyway, so um. What does somebody say? My pillows have microchips feeding conspiracies. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Um, how much publicity is the My Pillow guy getting just from jokes being done on Saturday Night Live? You know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we want the My Pillow guy to go away, and he won't go away because he's getting all this publicity because he's a douche. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, so well, Tony, so he's he's uh, gonna be. He, I, I think I think he's gonna be just yeah. fine. Yeah, you know what it is, yeah. Alex. When you, you, we were so nervous because it's like when you see it, he was upset. I said, "Oh God, I hope it's not new." You know what scared me too? Because about two or three weeks ago, he kept telling me, "Oh, I I feel like I got water in my ear." I thought maybe you had it in the lymph nodes. I told the doctor. She checked. There's nothing there, Alex. They put a scope into his ear and down his throat. We gave him the whole. Well, they stuck one up my penis, so no big deal. Oh God, he's like, I'm telling you, it's not like what are you? The doc, you know, the lady told me on the phone, the doctor, Doctor Karachis, and Sam says, "What did your brother think he's a doctor?" I says, "No, but I'm reading it on one MD." Well, my whole thing is, my my desire has always been to get it, get it all done at once. 
have a uh, cystoscopy, which goes in your penis, and a colonoscopy, which goes up your butt, and then the one that goes down your throat is an endoscopy. I don't know why the endoscopy doesn't go in the end, but the endoscopy goes in through the top, and then have them all do it at once to get it out of the way, and while they're there, try to see each other. You want to laugh, Alex? You know what my mother said today? Mm -hmm. When go out and get Greg, that's my brother's name, my older brother, we got to buy him ice cream because he got to eat soft food. She, Mom, we're not, I'm not going to go now. I mean, we got time. Yeah. She, we're going to load him up because he's thin. We're going to load him up and fatten him up. <laughs> yeah, fatten him up. Yeah, yeah good. But, but I'm glad that he's able to get whatever he's getting done because they're yeah, doing yeah. away with elective surgery in New York State. Oh, so. Alex, they're right. Alex, do you, you know what they said? Hmm. In Sloan, the, the doctor says it is quiet there, but they're worried about... They're, they're gonna, you're right, they're going to do away with elective stuff. So. They, they, they've, they're going back starting Monday, no indoor dining. Yeah, that's you know why? On. Because starting Monday, COVID has decided it's not going to dinner. <laughs> okay, so, you know, I mean, I don't know why they say we're going to stop it Monday. I mean, they should say, everybody, know. stop now. You know? I, I mean, if it's that. urgent, let's stop it now. Why are we waiting? Yeah. Um, the curfew, the same thing. They stopped that curfew, and I had to go to Los Gatos to get something. And yeah, there are people out dining like it's their last night of freedom. But don't people understand we can stop this thing if you just hold it down for a cu- about a month? I can't wait to get the vaccine from my doctor in his office. Well, you're going to be the last one on the list. Well, you know what I mean? I, I go way before you. Vaccine. I get it. I get it. I'm. Th- I think I'm third in line. First, it's uh, the first care. responders and the doctors, and then the healthcare people in the nursing homes, and the people in the nursing homes, and then me. And then, all the people from seventy to eighty, which would include Marjorie. So I'm going to get mine first, and she's going to have vaccine envy. <laughs> you know. Uh, but I don't know. I, should I take it before her? Or should I wait for her? There'll be enough people taking it. Yeah. They're going to report on every single person that has an allergy of it, you know? Well, I mean, uh, you know, they, the, the two allergies they had in, in, in Britain, both those people had on their person EpiPens. So they were allergic to begin with. Okay. Yeah. So they, so, and they gave them the EpiPen, they were fine. Yeah. You know, so anything bad that or any any and irregularities that come from it, they're they're gonna be very transparent. I mean, does this thing contain peanuts? Venus, <laughs> you know. peanuts, peanuts. <laughs> Gee, why do you have to take it there, Brian? Oh, oh, to, yeah, who was uh, talking about? Hey, what happened to Phil's friend? Was this just a one-time blast? Oh, Phil's friend? Yeah, I guess it was a one-time <laughs> blast. I guess. You know. Bill just attacked the, you know, send him on us, and then, you know, everything was fine. He supposedly was a cop who's been honored and things like that, you know. Very oh, really? high, highly decorated policeman, yeah. yeah. Who's this? Uh, this was a guy who called the other night. What was his name? I forget, I forget it. Alan right? or something? Alan, yeah. And uh, he was Phil's friend. And uh, he's called because Phil said call. So he called, and I hope he'll call back if he's listening. Because yeah. we would love to have him uh, have him here. How's everything in Connecticut, Jeff? Because up there, you're kind of like infected big time, aren't you? Yeah, it's getting worse. Is it really? In New Haven, it's really bad. Oh, boy. Yeah. Here in New York City, we have the largest amount of people hospitalized in New York City of any other part of the state. But then again, we have, we're more populated, but we have the lowest percentile of any part of the state. So, it, you know, it's about point zero point two. Hey, that's zero point zero two. That was it, which is the same number as my PSA for my prostate, believe it or not, which is, you know, it's minimal in a way. Uh, so like 16, 1,600 people hospitalized in New York City, but we got a population of what here? Something like 9 million? Something like that. So they're testing a lot, right? You said like how many two hundred thousand or something? They just tested over two hundred thousand yesterday. Yeah, that's well, awesome. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'll get, I have the I have his little letter he puts out every day, and let me see here. Uh, oh yeah, we have sixteen thousand sixty eight. Sixteen hundred sixty eight people in New York City are hospitalized with it, uh, and, we're, and for a total of zero point zero two percent 
of the population. Whereas mm -hmm. in uh, the Finger Lakes region, they have 611, which is 0 0.05. Uh, but no, nobody's gone very high in the state. Uh, hmm. But anyway, uh, where is it? Uh, where's his? Uh, okay, total COVID hospitalizations rose to 5,321. That's in the state of New York. Of the 212,672 tests reported yesterday, <laughs> you ready for that? Uh, 10,595 or 4.98% were positive. There were uh, 1,007 patients in ICU yesterday, up 13 from the previous day, and of them, 400, 546 are intubated. Sadly, we lost 87 New Yorkers to the virus. This is coming from a point where at one point, nobody died from it in New York State for a couple of days. Right. So. So what they're checking in California is they're looking for the percentage of bed of beds uh, available. That's what they're using as their baseline. So they say 15%. When it's going under 15% availability of beds, that's when they're in, the in the hospital in an area. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's an orange area, and now let's say it goes up above 90%. They lock everything down. Yeah, they yeah, don't want to. They don't want to wind up having the hospital problem that they the other states right. are. No, and they facing. pushed us in the San Joaquin Valley. <laughs> what? They pushed us into the San Joaquin Valley instead of the Bay Area. Mm. <clears throat> really? Oh, you mean you're you're where you live? Yeah, that counts. Oh, yeah. okay. So are you We're like are, South South Bay? I, what are you? A red yeah. zone or orange zone or a purple? We're red. You're red. That's not good. That's yeah, not we're good. Purple. Yeah, I mean it's it is and it's it's the stupidest. I, guess, but I don't know what the and now, color we are. I don't know. Shit. No, I think you guys are red, yeah, red. I know that uh, you know, I just hit my uh, I got my sixth or seventh result back yesterday and I'm negative, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah, well I'm negative all the time. But that's my personality. That's uh, true. Um um uh, <laughs> No, uh, and I know this isn't going to get us a great number of listeners because they don't want to hear about the COVID because that's not happy talk, all right? But we'll be giving we'll be giving makeup tips next week. Okay, how's that to make up mm -hmm. this? Um, well, the the um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, God, now I forgot. See, if I if I go off on these tangents, I never can quite come back again anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to be able to go off on a tangent and then turn a left at uh, at San Luis Obispo and then come right back to what I was talking about. You know? There we are, purple. You are purple. You are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, what I was going to say. the whole state practice. All, all we got to yeah. do, folks, is just back off a little bit. You know, just mm -hmm. now. Oh, yeah, I know what it was. Here in New York State, what do you think the number one, they had, they had a whole list of the way things are spread and the percentage of, of, mm -hmm. of, cases that came from that kind of spread what do you think the number one spread is and is 75 percent of the cases spread in the home that's home right living room spread we're calling it yeah. hmm. people come over to your house say hello it's the holiday season congratulations you got covid yeah, yeah. uh the second one was health care at about 6%, which doesn't make me want to go to a hospital anytime soon, right? And then it goes down and down and down. Uh, by the way, I'm really safe because the last one on the list was media. I guess it's like movies and television and things like that. You know, but. Yeah, I took my mom to the hospital today, and it was busy as shit there. Really? really? Wow. Well, you know, when it was at its height here in New York, at night, you heard nothing but sirens going yeah. blaring constantly. And they were running, you, you thought they were running out of hospital beds. They were running out of ambulances. Mm -hmm. How's everything where you live, Josh? Huh? Uh, it's still on the rise, I think. So yeah. it's about the same, but still going up. And they keep mm. kind of put like, little fake measures and stuff like that and they do that i don't really now you're in ohio wasn't that one of the big deniers of all of this originally no no uh, it's, been, it's been i mean there are people here like that but the state really hasn't i mean there's 
mm-hmm. the Republican governor here has done so much that most of the Republicans that I know can't stand him, you know, because of Ben's mm-hmm. involved in it, you know, he's complicit yeah. and he, yeah, he wouldn't let Ohio lawsuit with the other states for Trump. He's just a closet Democrat and you know, blah, 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 blah. That's but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of the way it is, you know, yeah. it, Five years ago, if you'd ask these people, hey, what do you think about Mike DeWine? Oh, God sent us Mike DeWine. You know, he's a great yeah. man. And, you know, now because he wouldn't blow Trump or whatever, he's a oh, Republican in name only. I mean, you know, just kind of that's the times we're currently finding ourselves. And I just can't wait till we can <clears throat> Biden sworn in and just get some of this to blow over. I mean, they could be swearing in Mickey Mouse January. Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that uh, Biden doesn't take a page out of the Trump book in this respect, that I would like a president who is at least going to shut up for a while, just go to work, you know, I don't want to hear from him every day. I don't want a press conference. I don't want, uh, do you feel the same way? You know, we just want some peace and quiet, do your job, save our lives. Don't let us die. You know, Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's probably that you'll find him on. I mean, I don't think he's going to be out there all the time. Oh, no, I don't think he's going to be tweeting. Or, you know, I, does he tweet now at all? Not really. No. Oh, but. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he he does, but it's not, it's very official, you know. Yeah. It tends to be the same tweets recycled over, positive messages and things of that. I mean, don't really put anything out there that's, makes you think that he actually t- typed it himself and like Trump does there it's messages that you read and it's well it's he crafted he, he, and say that you yeah. can tell four four or five people looked at it and said this is good he and Kamala are the times people of the year yep see that yeah mm-hmm. so yeah. Uh, that pissed Trump off huh so I bet that pissed Trump off yeah <laughs> Now, now they can really piss him off by maybe giving him a Nobel Prize. That would be nice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me ask you all here. Let's let's take a little. Uh, I'm, I'm on here. Okay, so we've got at least a vaccine being shipped now. Not going to solve the problem. Just going to put a little dent in the in the wall. The people who get it are going to be somewhat immune to it. When they get their second shot, they're going to have about ninety percent chance of not getting it. Probably still should wear a mask until uh, the the rates of infection go down. But we are at least seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. So my question to you is, what do you want to do after COVID is gone? What's what's the first thing you're going to do that you aren't doing now? Mm-hmm. Brian? Uh, the guy, maybe uh, Kevin remembers the guy after they said the lottery, he said he's going to be doing cocaine to hookers. <laughs> 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 hey, that, that was the news. The news interviewed the guy. What would you do if you won the lottery? He says cocaine and hookers. You know, nobody is a live spot. Yeah, no, um, no, I don't know. Yeah. I just take the family. I want to, I like to plan a trip. I mean, that's the biggest thing for us. We haven't really gone anywhere. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly how, about, what I do. how about you, Jeff? I just want to go somewhere. I, I, yeah. You know, it, it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah. I said to somebody, I'll go to New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going, I'm going somewhere. Where? New Jersey. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Charlie, what are you going to do? Probably just leave the house. Go bowling. Right? bowling. Bowling? Bowling. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been bowling since March. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, these are all the things, the things we long for and the things we miss are not, you know, they're not profound. Nobody's going to come up with anything profound here. Maybe Josh will, although he'll probably just... Go to another historic site somewhere, right, Josh? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to change much because I haven't changed really. I didn't go out really and do stuff anyway. We, we chill a lot, but I mean, I'll just be glad that we can go to things and they'll be open mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and not have to, well, you you can come here, but the this 
such and such is closed for tours right now. You know, it's yeah. half open or three quarters open or whatever. It'd be nice to just roll in, roll out, not have to take notes about what you can and can't do. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice. John Larkin, what are you going to do? That's been an annoyance. I'm going to go to work, go to my theater, see some shows, you know, and go to my local bar and shoot some pool. That's about it. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that when we say, what are you going to do when this is all over? You, the first thing you say is something as simple as that, which yeah. is something you're yeah. not doing now. I miss I miss the you're, theaters, you know? Yeah, your I sense of work. normalcy is going to a theater and playing some pool with some friends. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, yeah. Tony? You know, I got I got something funny to tell you that I think you'll get a kick in the You know what I miss the most? What? Just going to the bakery and having a coffee and reading the paper. Yep. Yeah. And yep. mm-hmm. playing my mother's numbers, there's just to and not have to live in like the other day. I ran out of the house, not ran out, I just walked out of the house to put her numbers in to get her a donut. And I had to run back in, I forgot my mask. I'm like, I don't have to leave this. Uh, Marjorie's had that happen. And you know what I do? I always keep a mask in the back pocket of my pants. Me too. So when I put them on, if I walk out the door and I, I get downstairs and I don't have a mask, I do have a mask. You but know? I thought of something funny that you might have got a kick out of, Alex, with this whole COVID thing. You ever remember the family you never wanted to see? And this is the perfect excuse. I'd love to see it, but it's the COVID. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. A living room spread is terrible. Uh, We don't want to do that, right? Uh, How about you, Kevin? Same thing, just do something normal. Go to a baseball game. Isn't it interesting? Nobody's coming up with anything exotic, you know? It's Like, for instance, for Marjorie and I, we decided once this is over... We don't care what it costs, you know. We're going to get in a plane, and we're going to go to Europe, and we're going to go have breakfast in Paris, okay? Mm-hmm. Just yeah. to go somewhere, okay? Yeah, yeah. It's first thing we're going to do. Uh, of course, they got to clear it up over there, too, before we can do it. But that we, that we that's our exotic plan that, you know, we, we, we're missing doing that. We miss the fact that we can't get on a plane if we want to right now and go to Paris or go to Spain or even just, you know, get on a boat somewhere. We can't do any of that. Yeah, I think it's that whole fear. Like, you can't, everything's been taken away from us. Yeah. It really has. And I can't say that it hasn't gotten to me, you know, that I, I'm afraid to go outside now. It's, you know, to me, it's a petri dish out there. And I've never been, I've always been, I've never worried about that. People go, oh, it's called flu and cold and flu season. Well, I got my flu shot, and if I get a cold, so what? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't throw that kind of caution out the window now. Oh. I'm too old for that, right? You know, I mean, in fact, I forgot to ask my doctor because of the cancer thing that I had, am I in a more high risk group because yeah, you, of you that? Might be. My brother will be, Alex. Wouldn't he? I was thinking about Well, that. I don't know. You know, I mean, my question is i think because of the radiation it may have lowered my immunity maybe maybe that's that's possible but uh i i don't think that the cancer itself is making me is a a comorbidity uh yes uh yes uh john i I think uh the shingles and pneumonia that i got would uh because my immune system's really crashed i would think you know that would put me up on the front i would oh absolutely Absolutely. Yeah. You know. Um, but I love that what everybody wants, what everybody, the first thing everybody will do is just something that says normal to them. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, that nobody here has gone, oh, I'm going to go out and buy myself three hookers, you know, or anything <laughs> like that. There's nothing that, that exotic. <laughs> you know, I just want to go play pool. I just want to be able to, you know, uh, 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 what'd you say, Charlie? Bowling. Go bowling. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, and you don't think of those as exotic things, but when you think of them in terms of, of, of what we've gone through, that's pretty pretty big deal. You know, it really is. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, have you, have you, uh, for instance, Jeff, if you see, like you have children, have you seen them during this? Have they been able to see you? Anyway, one who is actually here right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Okay. He lives in New York, but before he comes, 
Mm-hmm. They'll usually mm-hmm. we'll come here for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Blood person gets the test. He, he gets everything tested and make sure he's okay and and he's not going to get us sick. Yeah. Nor, yeah. Yeah. Either. Us. Right. So. So that's kind of fun. The other ones have little grandkids. Mm-hmm. They're very dangerous if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, one is a great uh, athlete, and she plays all kinds of sports. Mm-hmm. She's a very risky person, so we don't see her anymore. We're not going to see her anymore. Well, they, they say that one of the things that is uh, that is is uh, um, that they found though is you know where the safest place is right now? Schools. The school supposedly, they say that if your kid is in a school today, the kid is safer in the school than he would be in the neighborhood. Mm. That they are so watching everything. You know, they're wearing the masks and they're, uh, they're, uh, they're hosing the place down or doing whatever they got to do, that the inside of that school is the safest place you can be in all of New York City. So I'm going down to a school tomorrow and hang out. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I think all we want is a sense of normalcy, but we're not willing to work our ass off to bring about that normalcy. That's the thing that bothers me. Is uh, I am I I'm, I I don't see anybody. I and I wear a mask when I go yeah, out. Me. You know, so I mean, you know, I go I go out every day. You know, I mean, I'll just walk down to Market Street and get mm-hmm. a cup of coffee, but I'll sit on you know. The fucking curb or something because there's nowhere to sit and right. you're outside cold mm-hmm. you, know? Yeah. you know i'm not i'm not around anybody though well, that, that was my point about the stuff they did here in ohio i mean you know like there's, there's a there's a new curfew from midnight to 5 a.m unless you're mm-hmm. driving to i mean i don't understand that okay what, what's yeah. really, what does the that make that? any I mean, sense i mean does covid say oh excuse me it's midnight i'm gonna take a couple of hours off you I know, mean, they were already closing bars at 10. So, like, I'm pretty sure the people that are out between midnight and 5, 5 a.m. on a race anywhere are probably the type of people that are really. You are know what gets me, about, though, you know, is, uh, 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 I don't. and I say this because I've never been a drinker, okay? Uh, not out of any religious reason or anything else. I just don't like to taste this stuff, okay? And I don't like drunks. I hate people who are drunk. They just make me uneasy. Even if Marjorie gets a little drunk, it kind of bothers me. It makes me irritated. But the point is that all these rules and regulations, they go, well, we're going to close down the schools and we're going to close down to this and that. Oh, by the way, we're leaving the liquor stores open. What? uh, Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to leave the bars open. You can go in and get a drink. What? Or the bars have to close by midnight. What? Just close it all down. In fact, the worst place that people congregate where they can get COVID is inside a bar, not only because that bar is enclosed, but because they're getting drunk. And when they get drunk, they don't watch what they're doing and they get irresponsible and they don't, they take the mask off, you know, and they got to take it off in order to drink. I mean, Close the goddamn bars. What's the reluctance you have? What is this? Oh, well, at midnight, we have to close down the bars. Oh, good. Until 5 o'clock. What, what is that about? That's for subways. Okay? That's for the subway. We close the subway at 1 o'clock so they can then clean them. And then uh, at, at, uh, at 5 o'clock, we open them up again. But that's so people can get around. But, I mean, a bar? Who gives a fuck about a bar? And, and that's that's what I'm saying is you know and it, it is somewhere like here. I mean, I, I just don't know what that kind of stuff really accomplishes, other than the governor can go in and talk for five minutes, yeah. or whatever. Bars in San Francisco have been closed since March. What's been closed? Bars in San Francisco they've been closed since March. Oh, really? I mean. Some of them, they'll let them open if they set up like tables outside, mm-hmm. but but they got rid of that uh, last week. So so you you know, but there are still bars that that break the rules though. You can see them around. 
Mm-hmm. You know, bars were mad because some of the restaurants were staying open that have a bar sort of inside. Yeah. And they're getting away with it. Well, here yeah. you can't, I think you can't have a bar in New York State unless you also serve food. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, I never knew that to be the case in, in California because I just knew bars that were bars and, you know, 3 a.m. Well, club over in Marin uh, County. I mean, you know, the bar is a bar. But here in New York, you have to serve food. It can be a hot dog. It can be a popcorn. I don't know, whatever. But you have to serve some form of, of food. Uh, so bars are open in Texas. What? <laughs> oh, te- well, Texas was stupid at one time when I lived there. They had beer lounges. <laughs> yeah. And then they had clubs where you could sell liquor by the drink, but you had to be a member of the club. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know when that stopped, but you had to be a member of the club. Well, what would happen is you would go in, you weren't a member of the club, and they would give you a guest membership. Yeah. And, of course, if you were black, you didn't get a guest membership. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, certain bars you could. Certain bars you could. <laughs> but, I mean, it was really stupid because everybody was drinking, getting drunk, going to a bar, and, oh, here's your temporary membership card. I think I had, like, 20 of them in my pockets, you know, when I would go somewhere with a friend and we'd be, get, be a guest at the bar, you know. Yeah, they, they do that in Utah. Mm-hmm. When, when you'd, go, you'd go in there and they'd go, oh, sorry, you have to be a member. But this guy will sponsor you, you know. But I'll this tell you the best sponsor, place yeah. culturally that I've ever been in my life, and I don't know if Charlie remembers these, but was a beer lounge in Texas. There was something about the beer lounge where you would go in and they'd be serving. Well, they still have Lone Star and they still have Jacks and Pearl. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. And you would get you would get a beer, and I was never much of a beer drinker, but all my friends went to these places, so I went with them. And they'd have Buck Owens on the jukebox, you know, and it was just so Texas. I loved it. I love those beer lounges. They had a certain thing, a Texas thing about them. Am I right or wrong, Charlie? Oh no, that's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was terrific. Uh, you know. I used to go out after work. Yep, yep. You drink. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, um, it, it, so it, 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 you know, it, it, it's just interesting that the things we're missing are just the simplest things. You know, yeah. not the most complicated things. You know, you would have thought. I said, "What's the first thing you're going to do?" Well, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go get on a plane. I'm going to New York. I'm going to go take a weekend. And no, nobody said that. Everybody said, "I'm going to go bowling. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go down the street and see some friends and uh, and uh, play some pool." I like uh, the baseball game idea. Kevin's going to deliver. Pe- yeah. uh, going to deliver uh, presents and coal to bad kids. Uh, and, uh, you know, boy, you're out of work this, this season, aren't you? Yep. I mean, this time of the year, you used to make a pretty penny, didn't you? Yep. Not this year. And all for growing facial hair. Yeah, they got shaved tomorrow. You you know, (laughs) um, then you'll have a new listener. Yeah, I, you know, it was interesting. There was a story on, uh, I mentioned this the other night, on uh, Real Sports with Brian Gumble about team mascots who are out of work, oh, yeah. who, who don't have nothing to do. Yeah. This was their biggest social thing, was being a team mascot. Yeah. Uh, not even the team mascot, but the people who were up in the stands wearing the costumes and so on. Yeah. And they feel lost, just totally lost, you know. As their family, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, what are you going to do when it's over? Well, I think I'll put the bear suit on again and <laughs> I'll go to a game. Um, big question, though. I said this to Marjorie. I said, I don't know when this is all over if I ever want to go back into a movie theater. Yeah, if they keep doing what they're doing now, I, I don't care, too, because I got kids and family is so cheap to, to watch everything. Yeah. And if you got you got HBO Max, yep. Christmas yeah, HBO Max. I don't have I don't have Netflix, but I have HBO Max. Chris, so. Christmas, you're going to be able to watch uh, Wonder Woman '84, the latest big blockbuster that they that yeah. they did. Uh, and um, Charlie, I mean uh, uh, Tony, do you have um, HBO Max? Yeah. Okay. Do, okay. Yeah. You'll be able to watch too. And they're going to uh, HBO yeah, Max can... is not in high is not in 4K. But they are going to do Wonder Woman in 4K. 
Oh, that could be good. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you know, it, it, uh, why do you have to go to a movie theater? I, I think a lot of people are going to be reluctant to be in any enclosed space with somebody sitting next to them that they right. don't know. Right. For two yeah. hours. Huh? For two hours. Yeah, sitting there for two hours. <laughs> and paying a hefty price for the privilege. Yeah. You know. And it's, Hollywood supposedly is very mad at Warner Brothers, the, the, Warner Brothers. the theater owners and so on, because they've said they're only going to, they're only going to release their movies to... Uh, theaters and and uh, HBO Max at the same time. Oh shit! Okay, and so the theater owners are livid with them. And if I if I were the head of Warner Brothers, I'd say, "Fuck you." You know, we found another form of distribution here. It's going to make us a lot of money. Do you know that Disney Disney Plus just passed sixty five million subscribers? Wow! So there's a lot of money in that. And they're going up a buck. Yeah, stock went up crazy today, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Disney's going up a buck. Yeah. yeah. I think they went up like forty dollars almost the last couple of days. What? No, they didn't. Go. Going, they said they were raising it a buck, or yeah, a buck, and um, that package they got that's going up a buck. Oh, you mean with the uh, with they got Hulu and ESPN? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I uh, I I don't know. I you know, uh, but Netflix has gone up for me. It's gone up two bucks. Yeah, I'm paying. Yeah. I'm paying eighteen bucks for Netflix now. Is it? Well, I'm paying eighteen because I've got I've got the 4K version of it. So you you know you get more. Plus you can. Oh fourth, yeah. It's... Yeah, uh, but uh, uh, you know I, I was almost going to cancel it, uh, Netflix over that. Going you know come on this is way too much. HBO Max. If you subscribe to HBO, it costs you fourteen ninety five a month, and you get HBO Max with it. Uh, you know, isn't Netflix a little high priced when you consider that? You were going to say Might something, be. Josh? No, I, I got Roku. Huh? I can't get. Uh, can't, can I, I know get you HBO can't Netflix? because Roku are being dickheads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, really? Wait, Josh, did, was there something you wanted to say? You looked like you were getting ready to say something. No, no, no. I, I just read something. That was all. Oh, uh, nothing that had to do with this? No, no, no. Oh, just, oh. just something I was reading. Oh, okay. Because he, 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 uh, You're good. yeah, yeah, he double tasks, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, he's good at it. Anyway, we got about a minute and a half or so left. It's, it's, you know, it's been a rough year. It's been a rough 2000. Everybody go to, uh, everybody goes, I'll be uh, 220 rather be glad when, uh, when 2020 is over, yep. but who says that 2021 isn't going to be worse <laughs> You know? I mean, it's going to be around still for a few. We're going to be stuck with COVID. I'll tell you, it will be it will be better if nothing more because Trump won't be around. Exactly. Okay, that will ease something up. COVID right. will probably start mm, disappearing around July. <laughs> okay, maybe August. Uh, is that what you're hearing, Brian? Yeah. I don't know. As long as they keep testing. As long as they keep testing and they can keep selling these. Let me see here. Yes. What's what's the name of the company again? Cephian. Cephian, ladies and gentlemen. The best place for you to stick a swab in <laughs> yeah. your nose and then stick it in here and have them set test it. Okay. The most yeah. accurate tests. Yeah, the most accurate tests. I just wonder how long it'll be until we have egg Trump to come back. Until we have Trump to come back? I don't know how we're going to get by with that. Well, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh, we're gonna get by without it. I'm hoping that it'll be soon because God knows we've had a great deal of entertainment, haven't we? Of course, yeah. we've had almost 300,000 deaths, but hey, well, the laugh was tomorrow. worth it, right? Anyway, hey, everybody. It was only in the. What? What, what were you gonna say? It was only in the blue states. Only in the blue states. Hey, Jeff, thank you very much. Brian, thank you. Thank you to Charlie Wallace. Thank you to Josh Wheeler. Thank you to John Larkin. Tony, give your brother my best. Thank and uh, kiss your mother goodnight for me. She's still up, Alex. Yeah, <laughs> and, and buy some new wallpaper. And Kevin, always great talking to you, too. Uh, everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Ah, hey, that was a good one. That was a nice one. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, Jack is next. Jack Bishop, he's here with The Intersection. 
Uh, he will be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I will see you again. Uh, let's see, next um, well, Monday we'll do our little show at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And then m- m- Tuesday night, be back here at 1030 Eastern Daylight, Eastern Time. Why did I say Daylight? Eastern Time, okay? Uh, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. Make sure you wear a mask. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.